Well, the online community is not going down without a fight. The FBI has taken down MegaUpload.com, one of the biggest file sharing sites on the web. And hacktivist group Anonymous didn't waste any time in firing back. Shortly after word got out of the government shutdown, uh, Anonymous launched their attack, hacking into and taking down some of the biggest sites in the federal government and the entertainment industry. First down, the U.S. Department of Justice, that's justice.gov. The FBI, the U.S. Copyright Office, also from the Internet or Entertainment Industry, Universal Music Group, and the Recording Industry Association. Now, this came just one day after the biggest names on the Internet took part in a blackout. It was all part of a protest to the Stop Online Piracy Act, or SOPA, as it's known, a controversial bill now before Congress. More than 7,000 sites went black in protest, including Wikipedia, Reddit, um, and the raw story, just to name a few. Even Google put up a banner to show their opposition to what critics call government censorship. So the timing of the government shutdown is interesting. Despite the outrage and protests against SOPA, the feds went ahead, went ahead and shut down a major site even without SOPA being passed. So what does this all mean for the future of Internet freedom in America? Well, Josh Harkinson, a reporter for Mother Jones magazine, joins me now to dig deeper into this. Thanks for coming on the show, Josh. So uh, I understand you talked to some of the anonymous hackers in the chat rooms while this was all going down. Um, talk, give us kind of the inside scoop uh, on what was happening. Well, it was just fascinating to watch it unfold in real time. I mean, you know, there are thousands of people all over the world who participate in these chat rooms. When I was there, I was in this chat room for this anonymous splinter group known as Anon Ops, where I think at any given time there were between 1,000 and 2,000 people um, who were logged in and coordinating with each other to launch these denial of service attacks or DDoS attacks on various websites around the country. And they were giving each other updates, particularly about the FBI website, which I think was their main target. And um, you know, people were, were, were messaging that it was down in Hungary or it was down in Belgium or it was down in Malaysia. And the goal was to shut it down worldwide. And uh, I think it was successful for quite a while. It went up and down. And you know, there was a lot of, um, there was a sense of kind of triumph, but there was also a sense of paranoia because people knew that the FBI was monitoring them. It was probably there in this very chat room. Uh, there were kind of shout outs to the FBI, like, hi, FBI. Um, and there was also paranoia because in the past, the FBI has actually arrested members of Anonymous for launching similar denial of service attacks on websites like PayPal. Now, um, we see this is in response um, to taking down that website, megaupload.com. Um, and so the, the government uh, was able to take this down even without SOPA being passed. Um, so, I mean, what could happen if this law were to, were to pass? Well, I think if the law were to pass, it would give um, content companies, um, you know, motion picture uh, and music companies the ability to um, sort of call the shots more than they do right now. They could essentially request that different sites be taken down. And, um, uh, you know, I think some of the concern is that there's not a lot of due process there. Um, you know, the, uh, it, it might, I, I think the fear in the internet community is that it gives them just too much power to sort of determine what sites can and cannot be on the internet. Um, so I, I do think it would um, broaden the authority of um, you know big corporations and the government to take action. Um, but clearly, you know what the um, takedown of mega upload illustrates is that even without this law, you know the government feels that it has a lot of authority to take these sites down when it when it feels like they aren't complying with copyright. So I mean, do you think the feds? I mean, is, is there a message that is being sent here? Um, you know that they don't even need SOPA to be enacted into law in order to go ahead and, and take sites down if they want to. Well, the FBI says that the raid on the site was not a response to SOPA, and in fact, um, you know, it had been planned in advance. Um, and you know, I don't know whether that's true. Um, I mean, the timing certainly is. Uh, pretty curious um, given 
you know, the uh, sort of intensity of debate around SOPA and, you know, just the day before all these blackouts on sites like Wikipedia and, you know, even Google crossed out its name on its site with a black banner um, to protest SOPA. So, uh, you know, it's, um, it's hard to say, but I, I do think, um, you know, it definitely um, in, enraged a lot of people on the net and made them feel like, you know, this was a retaliatory act. And speaking of people being enraged, the response that we've gotten here at RT has been astounding. We've gotten a firestorm of feedback. People outraged at this government takedown. I um, want to show you a couple of the comments that we've gotten. Uh, Dark Wolf says, it's good that they've done this. It shows that there are people that are willing to defend the free internet with everything they've got. Mark my words, there will be a World War III, and it's going to be cybernetic. And another comment uh, says, anonymous shutting down sites is the same thing as censorship. Fighting with fire, all you get is ashes. And uh, socially uncensored. EU says, I am an American and I am fully ashamed of the actions of my government. We go around the world telling everyone how much freedom of information and speech we have, yet justice here is for sale to the highest bidder and we're taking actions to censor the world. But just like any other nation, our leaders can be bought, rented, sold and leased. I'm thankful that more nations do not try to be like us. So, Josh, um, why such a fiery response um, when it comes to freedom of the Internet? People seem to be, to be really riled up over this. Well, you know, Liz, the Internet is still very young. I mean, it's only really like 20 years old in terms of its current incarnation. And uh, I think, you know, there's a, there's a fear that the kind of freedom and openness of the Internet, it, it's, it's kind of, for better or for worse, it's Wild West quality will eventually come to an end. And it will become sort of more like, um, you know, what you see on cable TV or something where, you know, it, it's entirely owned by different corporations and controlled by them. And so I think that there's a sort of hypersensitivity sensitivity almost to anything that might affect that, um, that might make it go down that road. Um, but at the same time, you know, I, I think that there's, there's a significant concern on the other side. Um, you know, it's not just big content companies that are seeing their, their information being pirated. It's also small documentary filmmakers or, or writers, you know, people who publish books, uh, which are increasingly going online now. And I think they do have legitimate concerns about, you know, what, their labor being essentially stolen from them. So uh, there's no easy answer to this. So um, uh, people that support the SOPA bill um, say, hey, something needs to be done, as you just said, to stop this from happening, to stop online piracy. Um, what then is the answer? Um, critics of SOPA say that it's going too far, that, that it's um, stripping um, people of, of freedom of the speech on the Internet. Um, I mean, what can be done um, to, to, I guess, find a happy medium where, where um, the problem can be addressed, yet um, there isn't so th this language that allows for, um, for what critics say is stripping people of, of, of their freedom of speech on the Internet? Yeah, I really don't know what the solution is. I mean, there are some compromise bills that are circulating in Congress, and you know, I think there are pros and cons to those. Um, I mean, the bills essentially, you know, require kind of more of a legal process uh, that one goes through to take down pirated content. Um, you know, to actually kind of pursue people through the arm of the law, and um, I think that you know, those barriers could be onerous for small individuals um, who don't have the legal resources to go to court and stuff like that. Um, but, uh, you know, bigger content companies uh, probably would have those resources. Um, you know, beyond that, I mean, you know, right now, a lot of sites do actually take down um, pirated material when they're requested to do so. Um, so, you know, I, th I think just, you know, enforcing against sites that, that are brazenly refusing to take things down uh, is, is probably the, the, the best thing that can be done under the current system. And, you know, maybe that can be done more robustly. Now, um, we saw this protest, um, and we saw um, the, these sites go down. We saw Anonymous fire back. Um, and so, I mean, is this just the beginning? Are we going to see um, the, this cyber war kind of break out between the government and hackers? 
Well, it's it's hard to say. I mean, you know, these denial of service attacks are, are fairly easy to do. Um, you know, there's sort of a point and click technology that allows you to essentially kind of fire this cannon at websites and, and shut them down. Um, the thing is that it's also fairly easy to trace people uh, who do that unless you kind of mask yourself using other technologies. And I think Anonymous is getting more savvy about how to do that. Um, but as far as kind of cyber war goes, I mean, there's a big difference between these uh, kind of website shutdowns and what you might consider sort of more classically to be hacking, where you're actually breaking into websites and stealing information. Um, and I, I think that is something that Anonymous is, is not quite as good at. Um, you know, a lot of people who are involved as the group has grown um, are kind of more like regular people who might not have, um, you know, really deep computer skills. Um, but, you know, there still is this sort of broader hacktivist community that, um, you know, organizes itself under other organizations in addition to Anonymous. Um, and I, I think that, you know, there are people who, who are very skilled at, um, you know, multiple levels of, of website infiltration. Um, and uh, this is certainly not the last we're going to see of this, and especially not the last from Anonymous, which has really grown by leaps and bounds in the last year and become much more political, much more willing to engage around issues like income inequality and corporate control of politics, which you saw through the Occupy Wall Street movement. Uh, Anonymous was a huge part of that. Um, you know, they've engaged in, um, you know, they've broadened their focus from kind of the narrow kind of internet freedom issues um, to a host of other things. And I think that's only going to cause them to grow. Lastly, um, just want to ask you very quickly, um, how successful do you think these hacktivist groups will be, um, like Anonymous, in stopping legislation like SOPA from for moving forward and, and from seeing other bills like this um, go to Congress? Well, you know, I don't think that they're, I think their primary role that they play is sort of a, a raising publicity, raising awareness about these issues, getting press coverage. Um, and they are certainly not the, the only um, force out there doing that. I mean, I think, um, you know, the involvement of big web companies like Google um, and, you know, also Wikipedia uh, and others uh, in this Internet uh, blackout protest, um, you know, a couple of days ago uh, was, was arguably a bigger deal. Um, but I think Anonymous is really good at kind of mobilizing the grassroots uh, internet community to, um, you know, support, um, you know, these, these kind of bigger companies. And so it's kind of this, um, you know, the, the Googles of the world are, are working things from kind of the lobbying angle, and Anonymous is kind of the grassroots. And, I mean, that's a pretty powerful coalition. Um, it's much more powerful than, you know, what uh, Hollywood and the content industry was able to muster. And so to the extent that they overlap on issues, I think that, you know, there's, that they're really going to win. Well, it's, it'll be interesting to see how this plays out. Josh, thanks for coming on the show. That was reporter for Mother Jones Magazine, Josh Harkinson. Thanks for having me, Liz.